Hello friends, in this lecture, I shall be talking to you about a very, very common urological procedure that all of us do, which is transurethral section of prostate. And once you have done this on a patient, what is the outcome of your operation? And if in the outcome you don't get the result as you want or if the patient is not happy, his expectations have not been met, then how do you solve these issues? So in first talk, I shall be talking to you about that when after a TURP, the urethral catheter is removed and patient fails to void completely, right? So that is the clinical scenario. Actually, after the catheter removal, following transurethral section of prostate, you can have two situations. One situation is a failed voiding trial, where patient is totally unable to void. In the second situation is when patient is able to void, but he has having obstructive low urinary tract symptom. So I am talking of the first category, the failed voiding trial, right? Retention urine. Now, in this situation of failed voiding trial, how do you handle this frustrating situation for you and also for the patient? Now, first of all, you should ask yourself a question. Have you done a satisfactory transurethral section of the prostate? And if the answer to is yes, that I have done a satisfactory transurethral section, then the reasons for a failed voiding trial may be some kind of edema, which is persisting in the residual prostate cavity, or in some patients, lack of epithelization of the prostatic cavity. So one of these two or both of these reasons may be operational in your patient and they are often cited as reason for failed body trial. In this scenario, we usually recatheterize the patient and for a period of three to six days, the patient remains on catheter and once the catheter is removed, the second body trial is mostly successful. How has this happened? What has taken place in three to six days that patient has been now able to void? Now let me first elaborate to you about this persisting edema of the prostate cavity. What are the reasons for this edema in the prostate cavity? The one reason is that whatever peripheral prostatic tissue is left in the fossa, it has some degree of uh, prostatitis, active prostatitis. And another reason is that the operator has used excessive cautery uh, around the prostatic capsule or residual prostatic tissue to attain hemostasis. The reason for using excessive cautery may be so many. The patient was having very vascular prostate gland or you are doing transurethral resection on the very next day of acute urinary retention. So, or the patient is on, you know, anticoagulant therapy, some something because which forces you to do excessive cautery. So, if you have either of these reasons, the prostate tissue will get edematous and when you remove the catheter in three days time after TURP, the edema might not have gone. Say for instance, this is how the prostate looks and you have left behind a cavity here and in the peripheral prostate, you have some degree of reactive prostatitis or you have created zones of focal necrosis at multiple places 
following the cautery. The second situation is lack of epithelization in prostatic cavity. Now let me explain what I mean by this and why does this happen. If this is the uh, prostate which you are going to dissect and when you do a transuterine section you leave behind a uniformly smooth fossa cavity and if that is the situation the epithelization will start from the bladder neck side and also from the urethral side from both sides the epithelium grows and the fossa gets outlined by a normal epithelium in three to five days and once you remove the catheter because a smoothly lined fossa patient will void nicely but if you leave behind a bumpy surface in the prostate cavity maybe you resected small small bites or you have created too much of cautery necrosis areas so this will this is uneven fossa and because of ongoing necrosis and inflammation in the bed you have delayed epithelization because of delayed epithelization urine keeps exacerbating into the prostate tissue so it's edematous prostate suppose in a case of large prostate you resected the fossa like that but some people like to be meticulous and then they resect prostate completely and they create a fossa like this now in this kind of fossa if you remove the catheter after 3 days or 4 days the epithelialization has taken place only in the upper part of the fossa the apical area is not well epithelialized and i like you to have attention on the apical tissue which looks like a flap the moment patient tries to void it falls like that like a posterior valve so a bit of residual mucosal flap bit of residual apical tissue will fall like a posterior valve and will obstruct the outlet and patient will develop urinary retention in this patient if you had waited 3 days more then the fossa will collapse and epithelialization will go on and will cover these apical flanges which were falling like posterior valve now once the epithelialization is complete and now you allow the patient to void he will pass urine well so my feeling is that if you have these three kind of prostatic cavities a smooth fossa b uneven fossa c a large fossa the duration of epithelialization in them will be different and therefore the time for voiding trial after turp should change at least in large prostate gland by large i mean more than 80 cc of the prostate gland removing catheter on second day third day may be fought with the danger of failed voiding trial if you give them sufficient time 5 days 6 days they are fine the second situation may be that when you ask yourself in the beginning have i done a satisfactory turp and you know that for some accidental situation some bleeding or sinus or some anesthetic problem you left behind a residual prostate if you left behind a residual prostate you must tell the patient in post operative period that the prostate is left behind because this reason you may not void in post operative period i will see what to do so if this is the normal two lobes of the prostate gland and when you done when you have done a resection dominant part of your resection remain confined to towards the bladder neck and you leave behind a pical tissue now this apical tissue is free to fall because it's no more attached to the bladder neck the moment patient starts voiding these apical tissues will fall in front of the urinary stream and will block the outlet and patient will develop urinary retention another situation may be you left behind sufficient tissue in both lateral lobes and when patient starts voiding in the initial part the lobes are lying in the passage or a situation like this only one lobe was resected 
and you had a bleeding problem, so you had to abandon the procedure. So if you have these kind of variations in the anatomy of the residual prostate, patient will obviously not void. You will confirm this by digital electro examination or an ultrasound or a truss. You will know the residual prostate and this patient for sure will require a repeat transverse resection. So I hope I made my point clear about the reasons of fade voiding trial immediately after TURP and how should you manage these situations. Thank you for your patient listening. In case you have any questions or comments, you can put them on my email drdalila24 at gmail.com. I will be happy to take that.